This morning, part of the book of Acts, as this is what is called Pentecost Sunday in the life of the church, out of the book of Acts. Allow me this morning to read the first eight verses out of Acts chapter 2. Where it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty or violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered. Because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? For this moment, I want to preach to you from the topic or the theme, the church that is Pentecostal. The church that is Pentecostal. The story of Pentecost, the day in Jerusalem, is for the church a kind of classic. A story that the faith community assigns authority to and also which in return goes back to again and again as a guide for its life. It's in this text that the followers of Jesus in their early post-resurrection formation reveals the community that has emerged and that it can trace its origins to. One that recounts the powerful work of the Spirit promised by Jesus in Acts chapter 2 verses 4 to 5, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, when Jesus said not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This he said is what you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Sometimes this story gives hope to the church, but sometimes it also acts as a judge, for the church is found lacking certain required or necessary qualities to be called the church. That in Acts we find the beginnings of an evangelistic ministry of the church as it's been conditioned to know and to live out the word of God as it's also been commissioned to continue the ministry of Jesus now empowered by the Spirit. The Spirit that would assist the believer with the courage and the conviction and the commitment to the truth of God's revealing love revealed through Jesus Christ. That the Spirit would be the advocate for the kingdom of God or realm of God that John was the forerunner for in Luke chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 when he said, I baptize you with water, but one is coming after me who is more powerful than I am. I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And the Bible says when Jesus came on the scene, he proclaimed the good news that the Spirit drove him into the wilderness and also led him in his ministry. That it's in this text that we come to know what both the writers of the Old and what we call the New Testaments already knew and presented to us that God's Spirit present in creation, sustaining the world, filling, empowering, and encouraging is the same Spirit that's present today in the outpouring as a sign of God's coming kingdom in the life of God's people called the church. Then when John the Baptist announced that Jesus would baptize his followers with the 
Jesus promised the disciples that they would also receive the same power. They described even the words of the promise of Jesus that they would come true. That the disciples of Jesus are filled with the Spirit to do what Jesus told them to do. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, the primary purposes of the Spirit are to assure the believer followers of Jesus that they are following a faithful path. That the purpose of the Spirit is to strengthen our witness, including manifesting signs of God's presence in the life of God's people. That the infilling Spirit also empowers the church to extend the witness of God's kingdom beyond its walls in order
that Jesus made. Therefore, they stayed in Jerusalem. You see, the city may not have been the best place for them to be. The city was a place full of risk. The city of Jerusalem where 50 days earlier Jesus had been crucified. The city of Jerusalem where they gathered together in this place where they were all together. They had walked the very streets where Jesus had been led down. They saw the hill every day where Jesus was crucified. They also saw the climax of God's true love and witnessed the ultimate power that conquered the darkness in the resurrection of Jesus. You see, my brothers and my sisters, the Pentecostal church has to recognize the risk associated with where it desires to do God's will and God's work. The church that wants to be Pentecostal has to understand there's a risk going beyond the walls and the doors of the church. The church that's Pentecostal realizes it's going into streets with drugs and crime are running rampant and it's there to be a light for those that don't want to go along with it. The church that wants to be Pentecostal realizes there's a risk with proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord because everybody may not listen, but with every risk, there's also a reward. That the reward of going in the name of Jesus means that God is always there with you. The reward is understanding and knowing when you give God your best, God gives you everything that you need. The reward is understanding and knowing that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up to condemn you, God's already got your back. That the reward in itself is the very presence of God that dwells with us. That's why the text says they were all together. They stayed obedient because they witnessed the faithfulness of God. That the church and believers in God's kingdom must be faithful to the witness of what the Lord has done to realize the fulfillment of God's promise. And the text says, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. In the text, the coming of the wind, it says sounds like the rush of violence. Some may be surprised by the description of the wind as violent because due to climate change, many of us have seen the violence that comes with the wind. However, the word in the text for, for violent wind refers more to the use of force as an occurrence. This move of the Spirit comes not to destroy the community, but to strengthen it in times when things are tense and to lead them aggressively in their witness of all that God has done. The move of the Spirit ushers in what Okay, a living soul. It's God that breathes in us. Morning. 
defining signs of God's presence is what becomes the hallmark to what is this new creation as God's kingdom revealed in this Pentecost moment. That Pentecost is all that it has. We think it's wrapped up in the signs and the wonders, but Pentecost goes beyond just signs and wonders. Let me give you three things to understand that the church that is Pentecostal must have. A church that is Pentecostal, first of all, must be a community committed to creating mutual understanding and community among God's people. Bible says in the second and third chapter, verse of chapter 2, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The power of the Holy Spirit works in the lives of believers. When we avail ourselves to the work of the Spirit, to allow the Spirit to work in us is to allow us to speak in ways that others can understand. It's in the text that the Holy Spirit allows those who opened up themselves to participate in the promises of God to speak in a language that those around them can understand. It's in this instance that they begin to speak in the native tongues of those that they are called to reach out to. This differs from what Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 20. He references what is called glacia, which means a static speech that requires the presence of an interpreter. But here in Acts 2, the community itself will be able to understand because they're speaking in ways that are hearer focused. Not focus on what the church wants, not focus on what I want or what you want, but focus on those that God sends us out to, to create mutual understanding and commonality that we must concentrate on the hearers that the Spirit sends us to in order to reach the very people outside our doors. You know the people that don't understand our church speak. You know the people that might have liquor on their breath and marijuana coming from their bodies. God sends us out in order that we can speak an encouraging word that they can understand. God sends us out that we can speak words of love that reaches them in their context. God sends us out that we can go with love and not condemnation. We can let them know if they're hungry, we can feed them. If they're thirsty, we can give them drink. If they're lonely, we can comfort them. God sends us out for mutual understanding. You see, my brothers and my sisters, Pentecost is not a private event where you get at. Pentecost is about going beyond the walls and the doors of the church to carry the word of God that erases all barriers and tears down all preconceived notions. To be Pentecostal is not through an emotional expression of loud music, jumping, and shouting. To be Pentecostal is to embrace people where they got to be able to speak to people in ways they can understand. The world will tell you what you're not, but we need to speak to them about who they are in God, that God loves them. The world, will, the world will call them liars and thieves and rapists. You know what 45 says about hope? But I know a God who reminds us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. to be 
in a household of God that is open and invited. The Bible says in verses 5 and 6 of chapter 2, Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, crowds gathered, and they were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of the person who heard. The church that is open understands that to reach the world for Jesus Christ is to embrace inclusion and diversity. The church cannot be a colonial power that forces its will upon people, but it must be willing to embrace people and allow them to be who they are. The text says that there were people who were committed to their way of life. It identifies them as Jews that came from diverse places. The marker in the text is that they heard them speaking in the languages that they were accustomed to. A community that desires to be Pentecostal has to be open to embracing people that have diverse backgrounds. Diverse backgrounds go beyond the color of one's skin and takes us into the sexuality of the individual. That there are people that will hear what you have to say about Jesus when we speak in ways that they understand by inviting them to be a sister or a brother because we understand that God loves them. When we speak about Jesus, we're telling the story of God's love
language that demonstrates God's unconditional love in the ways people can understand. The divine spirit of God moves us from being self-centered to being Christ-focused. The spirit of God moves us from being exclusionary to a radical hospitality that opens up God's table to whoever will let them come. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that gives power to the weak and lifts us up on wings like an eagle. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that Jesus said, stay till you receive power from on high. I'm talking about a power that allows us to love one another with the love of God. I'm talking about a power that allows us to love our enemies and to speak words of life. I'm talking about power that we'll have, that will never be destroyed. Thank you. 